Hey, everyone. Welcome back to High T Hoops. This is Brian Boshe at the Duke of Hoops, and I am joined by Skylar Smith, the Duchess. What's up, Duchess? Hi, Brian. Super excited for today's episode. It's going to be a great one. Aren't you just so excited for esports chat? So excited. I feel like I'm here today just to learn. I'm here with the <laughs> audience today to learn. I rate, I rate the NBA fits, the fashion game. So now it's time yeah. for you to go into my world on esports. And today we have two very special guests from the Manchester Giants. Alex, the team captain and manager of Manchester Giants Esports, and then Liam, the head of marketing at Manchester Giants. What's up, guys? Thanks for joining. Hey, how are you doing? You okay? Doing, you know, just month nine <laughs> of the pandemic, lockdown. <laughs> Manchester just went into tier four, right? So you guys are doing great. Yeah, it's, ne it's never ending. I think in a few months we'll be in tier nine, which means we're locked <laughs> in the basement at gunpoint. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just for the audience, so you guys can introduce yourselves. Liam, do you want to kick us off? Just go through a little bit about your background. How long have you been at the Giants? What's your position? We'd just love to hear a little bit more about your professional background. Uh, so my name is Liam Bryant. I'm the uh, head of marketing for the Manchester Giants. That makes it sound a little bit grander than what it is, as there's not many people in the, uh, <laughs> in the marketing department. So uh, I am the marketing department in a lot of ways. Um, I've been working for the Manchester Giants about two years. Um, been a fan of the club since the 90s. Yep. Um, I did have a season ticket back in those famous arena days when we were looking a little bit more like an NBA team and British basketball was its probably its high watermark at those times. Uh, got back into it a few years ago, just wanted to get involved and then, you know, I started actually as a volunteer for, for a few months, um, managed to get a job out of it and my sort of tenure at the Giants has straddled both uh, the old ownership at George H. Carnell and Jamie Edwards taking over in January this year. So it's been a bit of a roller coaster. I've seen seen a yes. lot. Managed to see my first <laughs> wins as well this season. Um, and if any of you go to Giants games, um, well, last season, I'm not going to be doing it this season, but last season I was the guy in the centre of the court as well with the microphone, getting everybody to, uh, to chant defence and whatnot. So that's probably what I'm more known for. Love that. Little Jackie Moon from the Flint, <laughs> Michigan Tropics. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Alex, you want to go ahead? Yeah, hi. So I'm Alex. Uh, I'm the team captain for the Manchester Giants Esports 2K team. So a bit about myself. I started playing 2K back in 2K14 when it came to the PS4. Uh, that was my first major console, so I'm still quite young. I'm uh, 20. Um, I mean, I mean, you're in your prime for esports, Alex. Don't yeah, sell yourself yeah, short. Right now. Your exactly. reaction time is just brilliant yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Almost shot, over the hill. <laughs> Almost yeah. over the hill. Yeah, you're getting a little old. <laughs> yeah. So I got into contact with Liam, and then we sort of got this project started together with the owner. And then, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. That's great. So you started playing in 2014. You said so. You're about six years in, hitting your prime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. How did you get in touch with the Manchester Giants? How did this all come together? Yeah, so I mean, so many people might think there was some like complicated process. It was really as simple as sending out an email. Um, so I wanted to get into the esports sort of more of the business side of things. And then I just simply wrote up an email to a local team because I'm from Manchester as well. So I just sent an email out and then I got a response. And that's how we got started. Just Moral head of, of marketing, story, head of marketing at Giants. Yeah, shoot your shot. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. But before we get into all of the esports and everything like that, I just want to set a little context with the Manchester Giants in general, because I think it was eight years, bottom of the table, and new ownership comes in. There's a rebrand. There's a new energy. You're doing really well this season. You have MVP candidates. My MVP pick so far, Lyle Hexham on the BBL show, which got a little flack <laughs> for. Get that but, in there, Brian. But nice. I had to, you know, it's a good pick. He leads the league in rebounds and points. He's got to <laughs> be on that list. But Liam, going over to you, um, do you just want to talk a little bit through uh, the rebrand, the new energy that you're trying to bring to the Giants after this ownership change? Yeah, definitely. I think when you've been at the bottom of the league for so long and, and the especially the venue we were playing in last season as well, um, the brands just needed raising um, and, and a bit more quality coming into the brand to be able to attract the sponsors. Um, a lot of, you know, when I've worked in football, somebody told me once that if you looked at league table from the top to the bottom, the team at the top will usually be the one with the highest budget and the team mm -hmm. at the bottom will always yep. be the one with the lowest budget. So people are looking at the team and saying, well, why can't the team play better? And when actually it's the team behind the team that are going away and, you know, uh, increasing attendances, commercial partnerships, community work that's bringing a lot of the money in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the big focus is because we need to give 
the coach Danny and his and his team the tools to be able to to do a little better. So a lot of the focus has been building the club up. Um, COVID has has helped in a way because it's given us an opportunity to go and explore things we maybe didn't once have had time for. It's also mm-hmm. hindered us in a lot of ways because we've not been able to sort of expand our community coaching and outreach side. Um, we've not been able to get into schools and, and whatnot this year because it's it's so difficult with all the restrictions. But you know, look at the the strides we've made. We've come out and we've we've moved into a, a new arena, brand spanking new arena. We've got one of the best arenas in the league now. Yep. Um, well, the National you know, Training Centre, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the mm. Wembley Stadium of, of of British basketball, so we're very yep. proud to play in there. The first the first time I walked in to do the the promo video, um, we just stood in the centre of the court, and yep. I can't believe how different it was from from where <laughs> we were playing. And you know, I was looking at um, a video the other day of of, of uh, the netball team, the, the, the Manchester Thunder, who play there, and seeing what the atmosphere is like with two thousand people, and I think with Giants fans in there renowned for being the loudest fans in the country i think it'll be an amazing atmosphere as soon as we can get fans in there so yeah uh, and with the rebrands um we got into the summer and we we sort of met with an agency called bert a fantastic agency i've not forgotten the names it's uh, that but yeah um, good branding they were fantastic people we, i went into the process thinking we were just going to get a nice shiny new logo out of it but there's a a process to go through called co-creation where they take sort of people from around the club, uh, stakeholders internally and externally, uh, get them around the table. And it, it's more a matter of just sort of questioning who you are and what you're about. Yep. Um, and that's this This is what came out of the process, the new branding. And, and we fell in love with it as soon as, as soon as we saw it for the first time. And, and it really represents us and where we want to go. As, as you can see, the X at the top, it's yep. a Roman, Roman numeral 10. Um, which represents the the ten boroughs of Greater Manchester. Um, the ten boroughs for us is the the ten by ten plan. We call it is is going to be the foundation of where the club's going to be going over the next sort of five to ten years. It's all about um, having a giants in each borough. Um, mm-hmm. It's about it's about um, you know we're going to have an academy that that's something else I forgot to mention. We've got an academy, yeah. um, which again was was going to be down the road, but we've we've managed to to get a deal across the line to start next September with it. Wow, um, that's amazing! So there's going to be community teams in each in each uh, borough in the county, and then you know the best kids are going to be put through the elite pathway and. It's not just about basketball. We can do that with with media teams. So we're going to develop relationships with all the colleges in each borough um, and be training sort of photographers, digital creatives to come through the team that we're going to be putting in on the esports team. Um, one of the guys that's going to be running the media on it is a young lad called uh, Marcel Abbott, who's been a Giants fan. Love Marcel. Marcel. Marcel is, is, is going to be... A lot be of it. trash talking on Twitter, by the way, Marcel. Th- yeah, I'm going to have to have a word with <laughs> him about that because... No, I uh, love it. I love it. <laughs> Don't <laughs> make him stop. Be, being a Giants fan for a long time, sometimes that can come and hit you back in the face. So, uh, I'm <laughs> no, a little bit we'll keep it up. Like but Marcel's fantastic. And, and one day he's going to be one of those um, BBL media stars. Uh, and I don't think I'm over egging it to say that. Um, yeah. And, you know, we can take people that are going to be involved in video production and things like that. And it's almost they can be coming up through this elite pathway with the esports or under 21s or the academy side. And then they're ready to step up and work with the first team as well in a few years' time. So it, it's, it's everything. The 10 by 10, we're going to have a, a player visiting every borough and they're almost going to be the, the Duke of uh, oh, the Duke yeah. of Wigan or, <laughs> or, that. or, the, or the Earl of Oldham. Um, and it, it's a fantastic plan and it, it's, it's, it's going to take us years until we get to where we want it to yeah. be. It's probably never ending, but um, we almost want to become the greater Manchester Giants rather than the Manchester Giants. And, and, and really own the space and own basketball in, in Greater Manchester. That's a lot for one head of marketing, Liam. <laughs> it, it is. It is. <laughs> That's keep, a lot of stuff going on. I and keep we, asking for more minions to do all the work. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, Skyler and I were just talking about the rebrand on our last podcast, actually, and how clean it looks. I'm a big fan. It just adds that professionalism, adds a new energy on top of yep. the on top of the club. Um, and you know, you have times for nostalgia. You can always do throwback jerseys and throwback kits, but. Um, you know, I, I love the new look personally. It's been great to see the Giants take the brand and the energy and the entire feeling around the team so seriously into this new season. Yeah, definitely. I think when you're in Manchester as well, there, are, there is also that kind of awareness that Manchester is the cool city uh, in the UK. Uh, certainly that's what I believe anyway. So everything we do has got to be that, that little bit better yep. um, as we're coming out. Yeah, that's great to hear. 
So we heard how Alex got involved with the team. Uh, Liam, what was it like from the giant side? Had this idea already been floating around or was this a new concept? How and when did this idea come about? So I've just mentioned the academy and the academy was probably something that we had an idea for coming a few years further down the line. Uh, but again, we, we had a contact out of the blue and we managed to get a deal across the line. And we'd been talking about esports for a good while because we've seen the opportunities in esports um, and how it's growing. And, you know, I look at my own son who's, who's 16. He probably watches people playing FIFA more than he actually plays yep. FIFA himself. Yeah. Um, also, you know, it's the same with, same with, he's probably watching more FIFA on TV than he's actually watching real life football on TV. And it's same for yep. my, I've got an eight-year-old as well who's watching Fortnite. Oh yeah. Um, so Me I'm, too. I'm, I'm completely, <laughs> you know, this, this is what I'm looking at and thinking, you know, especially this year, we know that it can't just be about the five o'clock tip off on a Sunday. You need to find ways to engage with fans all week and to engage with younger fans as well. So it is something that was, was on our radar. I got the email off, um, off Alex. I think it was probably around a day later. I managed to get you on, on a, on a zoom call. Uh, and I think by the end of the Zoom call, uh, when we had an end of the right, come on, let's just do it. So, Alex, on your side, you send a cold email out. You've been playing 2K yep. for a while. What what instigates you wanting to associate with the BBL team? What was kind of your vision for contacting? How long did you have this in the works before you pulled the trigger? Because I every cold email like that I send you're just, you're, you're, it's, it's going around in your head. You're like, should I send this? How do I tweak this? So how long were you kind of, you're hyping yourself up, up. <laughs> head of marketing at manchestergiants.com. Uh, let's fire this off. So how long was this brewing and how long have you been thinking about this vision? Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't completely cold in the sense that it didn't just come to mind in a dream or whatever. It was more something which I got inspired to do through a digital marketing apprenticeship, which I did mm -hmm. uh, before becoming a student um, at university. So it wasn't something which came completely out of the blue. I sort of got inspired to analyze the markets a bit. And with being so engaged in 2K and the 2K community, I saw that there was a gap for UK teams. I saw all these European teams such as, I don't know, SK Gaming um, coming on board and making these big teams and having quite a lot of success with uh, viewer engagement. So I thought, why not? Let's just send one out to a local team and see what happens. How, so have you? how long have you been a Manchester Giants fan? A Manchester Giants fan? I mean, uh, so with basketball in general, I've been watching it for quite a while. I mean, being having some Serbian heritage, I mean, it's one of the biggest sports Ooh. in the country. So oh, I mean, I've been following Love BBL that. and being a Giants fan for about three years. Uh, I, I haven't really competed in the UK or played any major role in actual basketball, but I've definitely been there on the scene just watching and listening to all the news. Yeah. I'm very curious. How have you built your skill set and what is your practice schedule like? Because I'm, so I'm 23. So it yeah. feels like this should all be very like intuitive and natural to me, like social media is, but I've just never really... I don't know. I've never really been into esports. I've never really watched. I've never really played. How did you develop your skill set? What's the practice schedule like? Just tell me what it's like to be an esports player. Well, Skylar, don't sell yourself short. You are an incredible Mario Party player. So you're, you have a I, little bit. I'm not even here. that. I'm really bad at <laughs> Mario Party too. Yes, sure. So um, from my point of view, I haven't really competed at a major level as some of these other guys. What I really did was uh be more of a viewer and be friends with a lot of these guys who were on the top level so mm -hmm. i sort of learned a lot from them actually so it wasn't particularly myself or my routine um it was more them and what they could teach me just through watching them and also my experience with a bit of marketing and learning just through my education which really brought me to that level and understanding of look this could be something that could potentially be really good and beneficial for a uk team yeah. yeah, and definitely. do you think that a lot of young fans become fans of the NBA through 2K? Is that kind of their first intro to basketball? I heard we just had Sam the Ruler on the podcast, and he's you know one of the top players in the UK for 2K. And he's like, yeah, I became a Miami Heat fan because I was playing with Shaq 
uh, in you know one of the first two K games. So yeah. do, do you get that sense too of like a lot of people's introduction to basketball is actually through two K? Yeah, definitely. I mean, two K is such a sort of interesting game. Some years it's more arcadey. Some years it's more of a simulation. So yeah. if you play it for a while, you really get this mixture of. I guess, a fun game with all these crazy animations and contact dunks, uh, yep. which really build the excitement for the game. And then you sort of can branch out into the actual real world and say, hey, who are these real players that I'm playing with? Um, I don't know. I learned about a lot of, about Jimmy Butler just through yep. playing so with Sam the Ruler with uh, the Miami Heat and then coming to Chicago Bulls. I mean, starting off there, really. Yeah. And then through that, I got more and more into the NBA. I mean, I've always been an NBA fan, but I guess being involved in such a big franchise and a big game, it really does open your eyes to the actual real world of the NBA. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. What did you guys learn from the NBA teams who have done this with their organizations that you wanted to apply when uh, building out your esports team for the Giants? And Liam, Alex, both of you can hop in anytime you want yeah sure Liam, this should, do you want me to get started just from a viewer perspective yeah go on you go yeah so um i mean for me really it was the whole nba 2k league so when they got that started up i noticed mm. there were a very limited amount of uh, european players more uk players who were getting drafted so i thought to myself why not uh start trying to get something started in the uk and maybe grow that to the level and maybe potentially, maybe a bit far-fetched, but eventually make a league uh, where there's more of an European and UK central player base, which really gives more of an opportunity for our players to be involved in such a major stage and league. Yeah. And then Liam on the marketing side, did you look at them for inspiration? Yeah, definitely. I think the uh, the the way the teams look, the uh, presentation of the games and and whatnot is is fantastic. It's 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 almost a level above a lot of what football clubs are doing in the UK, which really really impressed me. Um, so it's something we're going to look at. We're going to look at the best in class uh, and model what the best teams are doing. I was looking at the Manchester City's uh, FIFA one and they had a full studio mm -hmm. set up and, um, you know, overlooking the court and presenters yeah. and, and whatnot. So that's, that's something eventually I'd very much like to get into doing. Yeah. I mean, their, their setup is pretty incredible. Um, but to go back to kind of the, the goals and kind of looking at the NBA for inspiration, starting it yourself, I love that to hear, you know, BBL team like the Giants has this five to 10 year vision, the 10, 10 strategy, yeah. you even branded it, which is great to hear. How does starting an esports team really tie into going after this new audience across the different boroughs and kind of engaging that younger fan base that does spend a lot more time watching esports than actual sports? So I think it, it's not just about the first team in, in a lot of ways, in the same way with the basketball team, it's not just about the first team in, in a way they're quite a small part of, of what we're trying to do mm -hmm. so on the basketball side we're, we're going into schools all over greater manchester and getting kids to play basketball and i don't see that esports should be any different to that yeah you know when we when we're doing when we're doing basketball camps there's nothing to say we can't we also be doing 2k camps and it's covid safe people forget and, that exactly <laughs> and, for, and, for, and for some kids you know you to be to be a really talented basketball player, it, it might not be for them, it, but they do love the game of basketball and they like playing as a computer game. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Mm -hmm. And to do it in a social way where they're not locked in the bedrooms, maybe we could get some sort of something set up on on home games where people could come and play our players and yeah. test themselves against the best. Or we could have a Greater Manchester League where we've got um, teams Ooh. from each borough from the ten by ten, and you know. It gives us a way to scout the best up and coming talent locally as well. I mean, that's yeah. so fun. And, you know, out of, uh, out of Detroit, there's actually a new company in the States where they are setting up the first sanctioned high school esports uh, leagues, where different high schools in the States, it's just like playing varsity basketball, but you are a varsity 2K player, a varsity Rocket League player. Wow. And it is catching on like fire. They've raised tens of millions of dollars. They have tens of thousands of high schools signed up. And you're right, you know, if you're not, 
you know, if you're, if you're not physically gifted or maybe you just prefer playing the 2K version, it's such a good way to connect with people, especially in the pandemic, especially when a lot of our social interactions are going virtual and it's, it's cost effective. You know, if you can just hop onto Twitch or hop onto discord and, and play with friends, it's a lot easier than trying to figure out how do I get to the facility? How do we rent the facility? How do we get that going? So a high school league across the boroughs would be a lot of fun to see. Absolutely, absolutely. We've we've been plotting it already. I've had uh, I've had lots of phone calls from people wanting to join the esports team. I think uh, I've t- I've texted them all back and say you'd have more chance texting Danny Burns seeing if you could join the BBL team because <laughs> these guys that Alex have put together are uh, meant to be fantastic. Well, that's what he's telling me anyway. So uh, yeah. you know, his head's on the block if they aren't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd actually love to hear from you, Alex. How did you go about building out this team? Yeah, I mean, so that was probably. At the same time, it was one of the easiest and most complex uh, processes because (laughs) um, basically the whole 2K community, at least in the EU and UK, is all on Twitter. So Mm -hmm. getting into contact with these players was quite simple, but it was at the same time demanding because some players wanted to play with their friends, with particular teammates, whereas I really wanted to emphasize this culture of having some committed guys who would not just bounce as soon as there was some better offer or if things weren't going as smoothly. I wanted some really long-term guys who were ready to commit and go for the long haul. Um, So from that perspective, it was quite challenging, but I'm confident with the guys that I've selected that they're all going to be very well equipped to compete at the highest level. What, what goes into picking good 2K players? You know, I, I mean, I look at Lyle Hex and I'm like, yeah, the Giants yeah. should sign him. Like, that's a good pick. But what, yeah. how, do you, how do you go about <laughs> picking and building a team? Because it's not necessarily like, are there certain people that are really good at playing post, that are playing point guard, even though it's esports? What goes into selecting those players? Yeah, I mean, every player has a sort of their archetype, so their position which they're really good at. And when it comes to actually selecting them, uh, you look on Twitch to see how they're playing, who they're playing with, um, their connections, Mm -hmm. and their past team experience at the same time. So I went through a balance of seeing which guys have the potential to be really good and who have been performing at a good level but are maybe not as well known as some of the other guys. And I've gone with guys who are also well known in the community who have already had a lot of success and who I know for sure are good team leaders and who will work together well to get the best results possible and be really professional about this and take this as seriously as possible. So to answer it directly, you can be like a known post player in 2K or like a known outside shooter. Those are skill sets you can grow. (laughs) Or is yeah, it more I mean, general? There's, uh, there's definitely, I wouldn't say post uh, in the post necessarily, but there's definitely, there's this thing called dexing uh, where you get, where you're basically a sharpshooter most usually. And then you're just sort of getting open just by off the ball movement. So there's quite a few guys who are known for that. I mean, with this next gen gameplay, I think fans and just the general audience is going to be a lot more engaged because it's a lot more versatile. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the first time in a while, players can do a lot of things. You can even have the power forward running up the ball, passing, shooting, dunking, everything. Yeah. So it's really going to be a skill-based game this year for sure. All right. I have so many questions, Skylar, but go ahead with your, <laughs> with your goal question. I okay, think for, like, our, for our audience, it's like, okay, what is esports? Like, what, how, do you be, how are you good at it? Because a lot of people don't know what they don't know and haven't played. But all right, go ahead, Skylar, before I launch into my 2K <laughs> Thanks, question. Brian. Thanks, Brian. Um, I'd love to hear from both of you especially as the first BBL team to have an esports team, what are your goals with this team? Maybe, maybe Liam, you can start from the, from the giant side, what the giants goals for this team are, then Alex, maybe what your personal goals for this team are. So I think for me, it's, it's about proof of concept um, mm-hmm. in, in, in proving that this thing can work and that it's, it's got legs under it and it's not, it's not a distraction and it can be taken seriously as a, as a branch of what, of what the club does. Yeah. I think that's firstly the most important thing. I've actually been having conversations with a couple of BBL clubs who are looking to, to do it themselves. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, the dream, the dream would be to have a, 
a British Basketball League, um, maybe not necessarily just BBL teams, but D1 teams or independent teams that aren't affiliated to any club, but it would be the best of the best in the British League. I think that would be you know, a great way for it to sort of finish up on the pro side. But as well, it, it's about coming down and making it community-based as well. So if we can get lots of kids coming and playing it and doing esports camps and, and meeting Alex and some of our better players and getting tips and, um, you know, just, just building a community around it, I think, is the, is the key thing to, to make a success of this. And then, Alex, your personal goals to the team? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's pretty similar to Liam. I think it's all about growth, getting engagement, but not, but more on the 2K side of things. So really getting our team to look as serious as possible and be respected by all the other organizations and pro teams who are already playing, and really getting the highest level uh, of competition results and also being a team not just that is, I guess, dominant, on the court, so to speak, but more off the court, being engaged with um, their community. Because I've noticed a lot of these teams, um, whilst they do get good competition results, they're not really uh, community uh, teams, if that makes sense. They're very yeah. result orientated. But I want to be more than this, or we want to be more than this, and just sort of grow as a team and as a community on the whole. Yeah, esports can be about community just as much as regular sports can be. Yeah. And sometimes more, like, you know, a lot of the streamers that I follow, the fact that you can play and comment on what you're playing and interact with fans all at the same time is something that, uh, you know, physical sports or if, you know, Lyle Hexum's out there or Jordan Whelan, 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 I always get, get it wrong. Uh, can, Liam, what is it? It's Whelan. It's Whelan, Whelan, got it. <laughs> Jordan Whelan, uh, incredible player as well. I can't, like, if I could hear them, talking on the court and like an answering fan questions while they're playing or like getting back on defense. That's something that esports has that I don't know if the NBA or BBL can ever get to. Yeah. I've sat quite close to the court uh, and I don't think it's something we could ever do that. Much in the <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> bubble, the bubble got a little scary with <laughs> the players being mic'd up. Yeah, that's very true. And I know bomber with the Clippers has talked about doing the Chris Paul cam back at lob city days where you could pick the player perspective to watch instead of, you know, the yeah. normal broadcast, you would mic them up the entire game, but you're right. You know, the trash talking there is a little too, a little too intense. Um, <laughs> yeah. For, especially for, with Lyle and Brion as well. Apparently they're uh, <laughs> very, very, uh, I don't know bad for it or good for it, but uh, yeah, they, they like talking. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go on the marketing side a little bit. So Liam, are you guys starting a new TikTok account for this esports team? Do they have their own Twitter channel or I've seen that they have their own Twitter. How are you thinking about, um, marketing this and building this community along with the Giants? So to start with, we've got a Twitter account and yep. a Twitch account, uh, which, yep. you know, depends we'll what competition is going to write to. Yep, exactly. So it's um, twitch.tv forward slash MCR Giants and at Twitter, it's at uh, MCR Giants Esports. Um, apparently, we can't what well, esports because of the character limit, but uh, you know, there we go. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, we're looking to to just start on those, and sometimes you can try and do too much. So I'd rather try and yep. build a platform in one place and and get and get a lot of good engagement on on that before we try and expand into other areas. Uh, Instagram's an interesting one, as as is as is TikTok. Uh, as we build the sort of team behind the team, uh, Marcel's going to be coming in. Um, we're starting doing the player announcements soon. And as we get into sort of doing games and whatnot, we're going to have a look at what else we can do to, to try and promote it. Yep, absolutely. And so to clarify, this is you are playing NBA 2K. So you're playing with NBA teams. That's correct, right? We're going to be building a Manchester Giants team. Yes, that's what yes. I want to hear. So they'll be wearing Manchester Giants kits on Manchester Giants court. Um, the players um, will eventually, we, we, we're going to try and see if, what the lead times are on doing it. So it might not be straight away, but the players will be having their own kit. It won't be a Giants uh, vest. It'll be an eSport kit for the team. Uh, so they'll, they'll all look the part. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all going to be branded Giants. The players are obviously going to be using their own what is it? Avatars? Is that the word? Yeah. Um, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So they, they, sorry, I've just, just looked like, um, it's okay. We're the old. Yeah, I, I look like a boomer now, don't I? <laughs> okay. Boomer. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. So they, they're going to be, um, they're going to be obviously dressed as, as their own people, but, um, yeah, it's going to all going to be Manchester Giants branded. So Alex, what would it take if every BBL team created an esports franchise? Uh, what would it take to actually build out a full BBL league in 2k? 
first of all, is that possible? And then how much time would that take? I've heard it's hard. Yeah, definitely. I mean, let's put away the licensing and the actual legal. Um, uh, they'll figure that out. That's, that's for side. Liam to figure uh, yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> if, if that was all uh, put to one side, it would be challenging, but it wouldn't be as challenging as people may think. There's a mode in 2K called Prime where all of this goes on. Uh, you go in with five guys or more, but five guys when you play in the match, uh, no substitutions, five-minute quarters. Um, you design your arena, you upload your images and your branding, and then you put that on the jerseys and everything. Um, from there, you're playing with five guys all mic'd up, everything, and you're communicating with them, playing as if it was a real game um, and taking it from there. Uh, when it comes to a whole league, um, it would just be multiplying this by X amount of teams. Yep. Um, and then there's this thing called private matchmaking within the game mode where you put in a password and then it's as simple as that. You just match up and then setting up a website or whatever it is to keep track of who's winning, who's losing, um, and the whole table. That's it. That's all you'd need. And it stays consistent, so it actually is locked in. It's not a temporary thing. You can build a permanent team to build out and play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever, anyone, literally any player can make a team, um, brand it up any way they want. Um, and then, yeah, they can go from there. I mean, you obviously need the players, but yep. anyone has the right and anyone has the possibility to make this. Skylar, I think this is our path for London Looperlonics to be a real thing. Maybe. <laughs> Do you guys know I... about the London Looperlonics, London's <laughs> first NBA team? Maybe it's an M first NBA 2K team. I saw, I, I saw it was like, I saw it was first potential, yeah, possible team, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we're from Seattle, so it breaks our heart that the Supersonics are gone. So why not have the London yeah. Looperlonics <laughs> yeah. as just a replacement team? Yeah, sure. I have just a very uh, basic eSport yeah. question for you, Alex. Skylar, to There's set like up still this, so much I don't yes. know. Let's set up this. We're just going to rapid fire through yeah. for our audience what like so many questions about 2k so just get ready alex we're gonna fire a bunch sure. they're very ready. basic yeah. yeah for our audience skylar kick us off here how do you practice as a team <laughs> yeah um so when you practice on this team you can go through this prom mode so it's same thing prom you can either do private matchmaking where a lot of teams are on a discord server and then you just say looking for a matchup it's as simple as that you type in the same password and you go from there or you can do the ranked mode where you just all ready up and then it puts you into a match against a random team and that's how you practice essentially uh, so there's no drills you're just playing scrimmages playing real games no no drills i mean you can make your own drills if you want i mean it's it's quite there's no layup no lines like uh, no, for, no, for layup lines, no layup lines no everyone's already good and ready no, no, co no COVID test for the players either. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you don't nice. have to. No temperature <laughs> checks before the game. Yeah. So, uh, so in the practices, you know, you run yeah. through like one-on-one -on -one drills and, and actual basketball um, on yeah. a court. You're not doing that. You're actually you're kind of focusing on your individual skill set, maybe individually. Yeah. And then when you actually have a team practice, that's when you come together to actually play. Sure. I mean, you've you've got a my career mode, which is where you can do all these trainings and drills um which is more to get your badges up and yep. like your progression level your ratings up and everything um i don't know of anyone who takes that really seriously other than <laughs> just grinding it uh yeah. everyone calls it grind because it is a grind uh, most people don't find it as entertaining but there's people who do um so there's a whole story mode behind that but yeah when you get into the uh 5v5 prime uh you basically just play you play you call plays you can draw plays on your own and just mm -hmm. understand them and everything. But then when it gets to the game, you play. That's it. Um, are, so is there a coach? Are you the coach? Is that different than um, a captain? That's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, from my perspective, I'm more going to be just the guy who's going to be sorting out all the player to team relations. So just make sure everything runs smoothly. Um, I mean, I could, I could easily uh, be there talking – um during the game saying what teams are doing against them maybe if they're missing some rotation or anything like that um there are teams that do that and who do have their own coach um but it's uncommon let's say okay so you're not getting subbed out if you t jack too many threes no, no. in a row <laughs> no, no. is there subbing out i know a lot of these answers but for our audience they might yeah, not yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> there's no stopping out in the game it's five minute quarters 
Okay. Um, so it's just five guys playing the game. In between matches, say if you're playing a series, one guy can leave the arena and another guy can jump in, or you can change your badges, your build, whatever it is. Yep. Um, and then you just jump in from there. Skylar, interrupt me at any point because I just have so many. Can players get injured? Um, not in not in the online game. Okay. In in, in my career, yeah, sure. My career, but, uh, yes, not, but not in pro. Well. Okay. Are there um, technical fouls? Like, yes, can you get in trouble for arguing with the ref in esports? Um, well, there's there's nothing yet with arguing with uh, referees. I think if they added that into the game, I would think there'd be a lot of that, uh, <laughs> just generally because of the excitement level and just uh, human nature. Um, but there are technical fouls which come up when you get a hard foul. They're quite yeah. random. Like, it can come up at the worst time or the best possible time for a team, uh, depending who you're playing for. Uh, but no, it's quite limited when it comes to that. There's definitely this factor of RNG um, in the game, which is just random. I guess I could talk about the release timing. So yep. when you're shooting a shot, you need to time it perfectly to get a green release. If you miss time it, it's a white. Um, and sometimes white going, which can be quite random. Uh, but other than that, no, not really. Um, how do you, uh, you know, if someone's playing like shit, how do you like, hey, yeah. You need to pick like what are you doing during an actual game? Like <laughs> yeah. how do you do you do you penalize? That's like if you can't bench them yeah. and you can't like take them to the side. How do you coach mid game or how do you like? I, yeah, I would want to get mad at them. How do you get mad at them during a game? Yeah, there's. I mean, different players have different approaches. Some people will literally <laughs> just scream a scream at your teammate, and they're the quote unquote toxic uh, players in the community. Yep. Um, I think most commonly is trying to be as constructive as possible and just saying you know stay calm you got this because like you said there's no subs in the middle of the game so you can't really screw it in and expect them to do yep. better so it's usually a bad process of just being like okay calm down you'll get your shot going uh, and then from there if they keep playing bad then you can discuss after the game well discuss uh but yeah you can get into it after the game can you only hear your own oh go ahead skylar Thanks, Brian. Does playing 2K um, affect how you watch basketball? Like, do you feel like it gives you more insight into the X's and O's? Um, I mean, it can do. It's a sort of yes, no sort of thing. If you've got no okay. experience whatsoever in basketball or watching basketball, you may learn a few things such as pick and roll, pick and fades, yeah. um, running it's some plays. Stuff. Yeah, but if you know basketball um, and you've watched it for a long time, you will realize that there is a limited amount of correlation between the esports and the real sport. Because obviously, in every sort of game, there's a meta where there's your go-to strategy and that works the best. In basketball itself, it's a lot more fluid. You run in different yeah. plays, adjusting to each and every game, um, and based on who you're playing against. So yeah, there's definitely some similarity, but overall, not so much. Uh, can you only hear your own teammates or can you also hear the other team while you're playing? Can you in, trash talk is my question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, in Prime, uh, there is uh, voice chat, but usually when, you when you're communicating in that game, um, it can get blurred out by the crowd and everything. So it's better to just make your own party and you can't actually um, hear the opponents in the Prime game mode. In Rec and Park, uh, which are other game modes, which are 5v5 and 3v3, um, you can trash talk your opponents. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it can be fun. Um, some people get a feeling, so you know, it's a way of life. So it's one of those things. couple more before Skylar finishes us off here. Uh, how do you challenge other teams? Because there isn't a BBL. Are you challenging yeah. other clubs? Are you just entering tournaments? How do you actually yeah. compete? Yeah, so um, at the moment, there's a lot of, at least in the EU, uh, there's a lot of these organizations, whether pro, semi-pro, uh, who are organizing these tournaments, uh, which aren't affiliated with 2K, um, mm -hmm. but they just basically set an entry fee, potentially, or you get invited, and then there's a prize for whether it's winner-takes-all or first and second place get a prize, whatever it is. And then if you're invited, great. If not, you can enter. And then that's how you really compete um you could also do wages but that's not as common with mm -hmm. um 5v5 that's more of a 3v3 sort of thing um but yeah it's more of these tournaments which are organized 
Got it. And then last question for both of you. Do any of the actual Giants players play 2K? Who's the best one on the actual squad? This question for Liam. <laughs> yeah, I'm told that, I'm told that uh, your man Lyle is, um, is a bit of a gamer. I know him and, uh, and Breon are always playing each other on uh, Call of Duty, I think. So uh, I've never actually seen him on 2K, so I'd have to... Uh, I'd have to find out. I think one of the things we're going to do as a promo is we're going to see if uh, any of the Giants players can stack up against any of our uh, yes. esports players on 5v5. We need that. If the actual Giants <laughs> played the esports Giants, in, in, that would be incredible. Please do that. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll try, we'll try and get Alex on, to, uh, on, on the center court at Bellevue and try and uh, <laughs> yeah. see, what we can, see what we can set up. Um, be a bit embarrassing if one of the actual players won it, though. So we'll uh, have to yeah, get yeah, some yeah, practice in true. first, Alex. Yeah. This has been absolutely enlightening. I swear this is Yeah, wow. This is the most I've ever known about esports. Um let's finish up. I'd love to hear from both of you on why you think other BBL clubs should emulate this model. Maybe Liam, you can go first. I think just just for the reasons that I've, I've I've already outlined, but for for the areas and for the, you know, so the London Lions have obviously got a massive market that that would be interested in playing this, you know, Plymouth and Newcastle and Glasgow, they're all big places that um, have a lot of a catchment area around them. So for all the reasons I've outlined, it's a good idea for Manchester. It's a good idea for all the other teams in the league as well. I yeah. think if we did manage to come together and have a, have a British league, then, you know, we could actually use the, use that to get into, I, th- I think as well, there's, there's a lot of people who don't play, um, don't play basketball that play 2K that could be introduced to British Mm -hmm. basketball. A lot of people that are interested in the NBA that aren't interested in British basketball. And I think we can get our brands out there uh, and in front of these people that that play the game and love the game, but don't necessarily look at, look at British basketball. I think it can only be good for the sport. Yeah. Alex, what about you? Yeah. So um, basically following on from Liam as well, I think other than the engagement factor, I think there's this real, strong potential for this sense of identity uh, when you're playing for your club, for your, whether it's national or local team, it can really bring in this massive audience of people who maybe did not initially take it as seriously to really support or represent their team and really try and do the best they can and bring the best results possible for their city uh whatever it is and i think it's really important at the same time for teams to take a chance on this because i know it can be um quite a thing where you're thinking there's no way this could work but if you just look at some of the other sports and the other games um there's clearly a big correlation with success with this um and real sports and how it can sort of combine together and just bring in a massive target audience uh and just basically branch out on your influence overall yeah well we're so excited to see how the club progresses and how you can build out this esports team anything that we we know where to find you on social any events or anything you guys want to plug coming up that people should be aware of um i mean go on go ahead liam I was going to say, we, we haven't got any because we're in quarantine at the moment. Yeah. So yeah. We're, actually, we're on Sky Sports. We're on Sky Sports on the, uh, I think it's the 8th of January. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, look out for that. Giants on, back on Sky Sports for the first time in a number of years. Yeah, yeah. and I'd say from the eSports, so, well, I guess we're all in eSports now, but yeah. um, from the, the player point of view, uh, I guess the best thing to watch out for is the player announcements, uh, mm-hmm. the squad announcement, which is coming soon. And then from there, we're going to be trying to enter our first tournament and then go from there. Let's go. All right. Thanks so much for coming on, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks.